Don't do it. No, that's not good. Stop. No. No. No, don't do it. No. 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 No, no don't do it. No. No, don't do it. No. 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 I'm a virgin. Ah. Uh, no. 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 Scalebreaker patch for update 23 for the Elder Scrolls Online is a highly controversial one so far due to the very sudden reworking of the entire healing playstyle and confusing adjustments that have further reduced the identity and presence of the healer role in most of PvE content. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to basically heal as of the Scalebreaker patch, what Zenimax seems to intend the 40 rule to be, and I'll be going over skills, classes, item sets, specific content, and champion points for all the healers out there who still want to heal. And I encourage both new and old players to watch this video and also experiment on their own as the healing changes open up interesting options. Since it's going to be a very long video, you can use the timestamps down below in the video description or comments if you're mobile to check out what this guide has to say about where you're concerned. We first need to discuss why the healer role isn't completely dead yet despite the apparent suffering it has undergone in update 23. ESO, in my opinion, has had a very unique take combat-wise in regards to the traditional PvE trinity of tanks, healers, and damage dealers. Yes, damage dealers still DPS, yes, healers still heal, and tanks still stand there and take the beatings, but a lot of details of this trinity in ESO are pretty different compared to other MMOs, such as World of Warcraft. Tanks are encouraged to not just sit there and hold block forever, the zenith of an absolutely good tank has them debuff bosses and buff their groups since they have hard taunts and don't really worry about maintaining aggro compared to other games. Healers are mostly the same in addition to keeping the group alive, meeting necessary healing checks, and also performing mechanics. Healers are also encouraged to keep up buffs and debuffs for their groups as much as possible. The best endgame tanks and healer in this game I've known can do all of this and beyond. There's a sort of issue though once you look at the bigger picture and that issue is that damage is god in ESO. It is an undeniable fact that the higher DPS your groups do, whether it's in 4 min content or 12 min trial raids, the less your groups suffer. An innate issue with ESO's PvE content is that crippling mechanics are certainly harder pites, parts of the fights that require really good group coordination and not just very good damage or debuffs or whatever it can be literally skipped. A great example of this is that almost every decent raid or endgame progression guild on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC hasn't seen Lunar Phase during the final boss fight of veteran Mob of Warcotch with hard mode enabled since early 2017. What's Lunar Phase you ask? Exactly. This notion of damage taking precedence and emphasizing the increase of it in many groups and raid teams pretty much applies to every single fight and every single dungeon and trial. That's why you see a lot more groups nowadays uh, take 3 DPS and 1 tank to every dungeon including the hardest DLC dungeons. The faster a fight is, the easier and safer it is. So how does this relate to us healers? In a recent forum post by Brian Wheeler, who is the new head of the combat develop developer team, he stated, 
We are not averse to the idea that players might need to adjust their current builds, such as running more defensive ultimates rather than offensive ones, or running more survival enhancing sets rather than pure damage or buff oriented ones. With how closely intertwined the healer and DPS roles are, much more so than the healer and tank roles or vice versa, Zenimax basically stated that they nerfed the healing output along with capping the springs and orbs to just one from the healers to force others in the raid team such as the damage dealers to compensate with defensive ultimates, healing skills, or even mitigation sets. This, of course, does nothing, absolutely nothing to alleviate the aforementioned issue of damage being god, be ki being king, especially with the general DPS and power creep increase as of Scalebreaker. The best or even decent groups will still skip mechanics for skill breaker. The same groups will not need to meet certain healing checks in the majority of fights and the groups that will still opt for more aggressive strategies will still be fine. In fact, it's a little ironic to me personally that lowering group DPS will only lead to a higher chance of failure still in a lot of instances compared to not using defensive ultimates or sets. But Nephis, you said the healer role isn't dead. This all makes it look like the healer role isn't for sure needed. Why would we bring a healer dungeon still? Will we still be bringing healers to raids? A lot of you have been asking me these same questions for the past five weeks, so I'm going to answer this right now in the video, and keep in mind I'm speaking from an endgame healer's perspective. I think newer groups, newer players, or less experienced players will cer certainly still need their healers. So the following may not apply to a lot of you. So, in the video, here's a list of content where you'll probably be able to get away with bringing just one healer, or no healer, or one of two healers spec for DPS. So we have all four main dungeons, DLC included, yes, even the new Scalebreaker DLC dungeons. Do you need healers for most of four main content? No. Uh, can you bring one? Uh, obviously, yes. Veteran Blacker's Prison. Depending on the experience level of your group, you don't need a healer, even in Scalebreaker, and onwards probably. Uh, veteran Dragonstar Arena, this is for sure, 3 DPS, 1 tank, been, been so for a while, uh, the healing changes will not affect this at all. Veteran Ethereum Archive Hard Moon, you can still solo heal AA Hard Moon and so on. Veteran Hellross Citadel, you can definitely have a solo healer still, most likely until Hard Moon fight or the last boss fight. Veteran Sanctum of Fidia, pre Manticora, and during the Manticora fight, you'll probably just only need one dedicated healer. And the other healer can be spec for DPS. Veteran Halls of Fabrication, pre boss 1, boss 2, boss 3, boss 4, you only need about, you know, just one dedicated healer. Veteran Sunspire, trash, you can also still get away with one dedicated healer, most likely. So, pretty much the same as pre Scalebreaker. The content that follows on the screen, you'll probably still need a healer or two healers depending on your experience. Better in Black Rose Prison, again, some groups prefer bringing a healer for Unchained or something like that. You can still do that, obviously. Better in Hell Ross Citadel Hard Mode, um, you'll probably still need uh, at least two people dedicated to healing. Veteran Sanctum of Fidia, everything after the Manicora, definitely you still need two healers. Veteran Halls of Fabrication, Boss 1, Boss 5, Hard Moon, you definitely still need two healers for most groups. Veteran Sunspire Boss Fights, Hard Moons included, you definitely still need two healers for most groups. Veteran Cloud Rest, Plus 1, Plus 2, Plus 3, Hard Moon, you still need two healers um, for most groups. So, if we compare this list right now for Scalebreaker and onwards to pre-Scalebreaker, nothing has really radically changed in regards to the relation between having two healers or not and the content for Scalebreaker, primarily due to how damage is and other changes, such as how orbs can now be synergized by, by multiple people and other changes we're going we're gonna to be looking at in the video. And when we take into consideration that Update 23 is one of the first steps for the new combat developer team, we may need to take a step back for now and see if they'll make any further adjustments to everything else, including damage dealers. So what, what is the identity of a healer in ESO now for PvE? It's still the same, uh, Still, you're, you're still providing sustain, resources, heals, buffs and debuffs for your group. Uh, a lot of aspects of healing from Scalebreaker and onwards haven't really changed. Certainly a few aspects of it have been incredibly exaggerated, and you guys will see what I mean later on. 
pre-Scalebreaker, healers had to layer heals, meaning they had to keep up orbs, springs, and keep up buffs and debuffs while burst healing when necessary. Post Scalebreaker, the layered healing is built into how long your healing abilities now last. Now it's, a, it's simply a matter of absolutely focusing more on buffing and debuffing for your group as it's extremely easier now to keep up the healing whether it's a class skill or a non-class ability. Playstyle wise, a lot of aspects about healing in PvE haven't actually changed and we'll get more into that later once we start reviewing the skills. The biggest universal changes to the healer rule came with the change to how necrotic orbs and grand healing work. Healers can no longer set down more than one healing AoE at a time, nor put out more than one healing orb at a time. The orb change was fine after they adjusted it so that one orb could be synergized by everyone in your group. At the same time, the grand healing change also made it a lot easier for the healers and also at the same time a bit boring. Layering heals and having the ability to spread your healing out for scattered members of your raid teams were significant parts of the previous healing playstyle, so that has changed. This means that the clear winner between healing springs and lustrous healing is illustrious healing as it lasts longer and heals for more. However, there may be a few occasions where you need to choose healing springs, but I'll get more into that later on in this video again. Other skills that were changed or skills we need to look at include Mutagen, now Radiant Regeneration, Reviving Barrier, Combat Prayer, and surprisingly, Mending Wounds. Radiant Regeneration is going to be your primary go-to for most form and content, as it solves the issue of being unable to put down multiple illustrious healing AoEs. In regards to trials, it may still prove to be a practical way of keeping up your heal over time, depending on the fight and positioning of your group. So a good example of using this to your advantage would be, let's say your group is spread out on the stone, the Foundation Stone Atronach fight in Veteran Ethereum Archive. You obviously can't hit everyone with multiple springs, you obviously can't cover everyone with just one uh, healing spring. So you could, what you could do is put the healing spring AoE or Illustrious Healing down on the people first away from you as a healer and then you could put out uh, Radiant Regeneration as it will go to the closest people near you. So that's something we have to think about uh, both positioning wise as a raid team and as healers to see if it is practical or worth it on some fights. Combat Prayer does a bit more healing now, and Minor Berserk is something healers will absolutely need to keep up on their damage dealers to boost the group DPS. Uh, this is one of the few rule nets that are still keeping healers in play. This is going to be one of the few skills that you can use between the very long durations of orbs, springs, and other AoE heal over times. Mending Wounds may actually prove to be useful this patch. As in essence, it could be another skill like Combat Prayer to fill in a time slot between the long heal over time skill durations. I honestly think the more Symbiosis will be very strong now in a lot of 4-man fights and maybe a few trial fights where all the damage is focused on the tank and you already have every heal over time taking away on your group. Reviving Barrier has been slightly buffed in comparison to pre-Scale Breaker in terms of its healing done. Uh, the healing was not very impressive pre scale breaker. However, the morph um, got a slight buff to the healing. So this morph will be the one we take over replenishing barrier for a lot of instances where you may need to use it. Now that barrier shields up to 12 people instead of just up to 6 people, this will also probably affect um, certain fights where you know people have to rethink their positioning. Another skill we want to look at is the healing ward skill which was also updated instead of healing someone after the shield expires it's going to keep ticking the heal so right here it says while the shield persists the target is healed for 40 percent of the shield's remaining strength every second so this is actually a pretty good um buff for pve especially uh for lacustis hard moon and other instances where sometimes you use the healing ward but overall, um, there are better burst heals out there when need be, or if there are certain mechanics that require you to use healing ward in uh, certain PvE content, 
then yes, this is definitely a skill you need to consider. Another skill that was changed was Quick Siphon. Basically, it's an instant cast uh, morph. I think Siphon Spirit is also instant cast now. And basically what Quick Siphon now does is allies who are healed from the minor lifesteal gain their you know, minor expedition bonus movement speed for about 5.6 seconds or I believe fully leveled. It's about, well, it's the same duration, I think. Um, for PvE, this, for the most part, does not matter for like 99% of the content. So really, um, it's not a very good skill to look at as a healer at the moment, unless specific content comes out where you may need the Minor Expedition, which I kind of doubt, but uh, we'll see. Now, three class skills we need to review are Budding Seeds, Extended Ritual, and Power Surge. These are the major players that were uh, changed as well for healers. The change to Budding Seeds, in my opinion, was pretty great. Instead of if it being a clunky burst heal that did absolutely nothing until it expired, or if you triggered it, it still keeps its energy, the burst heal, and now heals over time where you put it down. This is still definitely a skill a uh, Warden healers will need to bring to PvE content, as it allows them not just an extra heal over time, but another extra AoE heal over time in addition to Illustrious Healing, which will alleviate the inability to lay down multiple springs for multiple stacks of people. Ritual was also buffed with the uh, Scalebreaker patch by approximately 95% per healing tick. It is absolutely important for Templar healers to keep this up as one, it's extremely easy to keep up, so there shouldn't really be an excuse for you know letting it down. Two, it's a good amount of healing done. I would highly recommend choosing the Extended Ritual Morph as a new healing playstyle, emphasizes using long duration skills and spamming other stuff in the meantime. Now, Power Surge has also been changed with update 23 and now gives Sorcerer Healers a class AoE heal ability. Unlike Budding Seeds and Ritual, however, the AoE heal goes out to 6 people on a proc condition of critical healing every 3 seconds. This means that your heals need to crit at least every 3 seconds, so the Power Surge activates. In this part of the video, we're going to be going over the list of item sets that you'll still need as a healer as of the Scalebreaker patch. Um, so Beckoning Steel, this is a very, very situational set. I've only ever used this on my healer for the first boss in Veteran Halls of Fabrication, transmuted the jewelry to Arcane, and used it um, two-piece body heavy and three-piece jewelry Arcane. So that's pretty much it. Very, very situational set. Uh, I know some groups have tried it out in Veteran Cloudrest Tardmoon for the Militia Strikes. I'm not sure how uh, that turned out. So we have Eben. Now Eben, again, a very situa situational set. For a healer, again, transmit the jewelry to Arcane since the default jewelry trade for Eben is healthy. Um, this will depend on what your group wants to do, what sets the tanks want to wear, and if they want Eben on the healer or not. So these two sets are very situational. Gossamer, now Gossamer, this needs a bit more testing. However, if, I mean, basically it's like 100% uptime every time, you know, you heal people and you grant them major evasion, there's virtually no cooldown on Gossamer. So every time you heal them, you give them major evasion, there's no cooldown. And what basically this means is this could potentially be a set you use for uh, Veteran Halls of Fabrication Hard Moon where pretty much everything, almost everything is considered AOE, like the Bombard, the Stomps, everything. Uh, this will probably give a free slot for Stamina DPS to take their source of major evasion out, like Shuffle or Mirage if they're Stam Blade or Night Blade, and have them slot Vigor or some other self-healing capability instead to help you out uh, during Execute if your heal healing is not enough as a healer. We got Hersing's Veneer, so the same thing as Eben, sort of, but uh, Hersing is becoming more and more common to help the sustain of the Stamina Necromancer DPS compositions in a lot of raid teams. So this is sort of a must at the moment for groups that want to run all Stam DPS. It's a very, very nice set uh, for sustain. Again, again, this allows your DPS to get away with more higher DPS, and this harkens back the uh, beginning part of the video where I said, you know, deep damage is pretty much the end-all be-all for everything. 
Infallible Mage, this, this set is never going to go anywhere. Guaranteed minor vulnerability, 8% additional damage taken on the target. Uh, this is definitely a must have, rega uh, regardless of the patch. And here we have Jorvald's Guidance. This will also, of course, depend on how experienced your group is, or if your group wants a uh, longer Major 4 subtime, and so on and so on, stuff like that. And this is still going to be a staple set that most healers will probably use, unless they want to go more survival skills, or survival sets. And here we have um, Maelstrom weapons, so if we open it up, we're gonna have a Maelstrom Resto Staff. So a lot of people are, have been saying with the Radiant Regeneration change, that they're going to use the mouse from Resto Staff. In my opinion, the strongest uh, Restoration Staff right now will be the Master's Restoration Staff, and I'll get to that in a bit. But yes, you can use this for certain instances like VAS Hard Moon as a Kite Healer or the Group Healer. Doesn't really matter. Now, let's get on to the Master's Resto Staff. Now, this is going to be a very, very interesting, interesting uh, set to look at. Um, so the Grand Rejuvenation Set, the two piece basically says initial heal of grand healing restores 740 stamina to you and allies affected. So I told told you guys earlier on in the video, I'm gonna be talking about you know how some aspects of the healing playstyle haven't changed or have been greatly exaggerated. So in a patch where our healing springs or lustrous healing isn't um, required to be spammed. This is a patch where they also sort of encourage us with this set to spam Yolester's healing. Uh, 740 stamina back upon the initial tick of grand healing is a huge, huge deal. This is such an OP thing, and I covered this in a earlier PTS video of mine. Uh, when people ask me if the Master Resto Staff is dead with the changes to how Illustrious Healing or Healing Springs worked. And in that video I said, no, this looks pretty OP, and they kept it, surprisingly. So basically what this does, guys, um, when you have literally absolutely nothing to do as a healer, you are now providing a shit ton, a huge amount of stamina regen to your stamina DPS in the group. Like this, you should not underestimate this. I think this is definitely the most powerful Restoration Staff as a scale breaker for every single healer. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that. And it also affects the playstyle as well. So playstyle, I mean, as you guys can have guessed by now, very long duration, 10 seconds on an orb, 12 seconds on a wall, 12 seconds on Lustrous healing. I mean, and you can just do whatever in, in between all these three timers, right? With the Master's Resto, you're encouraged to keep doing this as if, you know, <laughs> we didn't have, uh, as if we had multiple springs to keep down. Obviously this doesn't do much. You're only putting out one heal at a time when you do this. So it's definitely a sacrifice um, for the staying back. But again, if since you almost literally have nothing to do as a healer in the downtime between long durations, this is certainly a very good option uh, to give stam to stay back to your stam DPS. So keep an eye on that. Monster Bogdan said, uh, Bogdan, they nerfed it, but it is still a very good healing monster set. Like in terms of raw healing output, it's probably still the highest, right? So you definitely want this still for very high uh, high healing intensive situations like Cloud Rest Hardman Execute, um, uh, what is it? Veteran Halls of Fabrication, Hardman Execute, stuff like that. Lord Warden Dust, this is again sometimes situational depending on how your group is positioned for certain fights, but definitely keep an eye on this and keep this set in mind because more mitigation this patch from both yourself and potentially a damage dealer is going to be key to passing through certain healing checks, especially if your group doesn't have enough DPS to skip those healing checks. Sentinel of Recrugams, uh, they definitely improved this. It doesn't really bug out as much as it used to, from what I've noticed on the PTS and on live uh, for Scale Breaker. So Sentinel Rokugams is going to be a pretty powerful set to combine with the Master's Restoration Staff on stack and burn fights, pretty much. I mean, you don't really need too much healing done for stack and burn fights from Bogdan, so most likely your to-go option will be Sentinel or Rokugams for those stack and burn fights. Symphony of Blades. Now, Symphony of Blades is pretty powerful in PvP, 4-man, and certain PvE trial instances. This is still going to be a great option 
for the healers uh, running around in Asylum Sanctorium Hard Moon and so on. And we have Troll King. Now Troll King, this is a uh, item of the bait, but it's still a very strong set. Um, definitely we have to take into consideration the possibility of people using disastrously bloody Mara. This increases max magic by 4.6k, max health by 5k, and health recovery by 505. Add that with the Troll King 1500 health recovery. That's a lot of uh, healing done, with technical healing done every 2 seconds. So this set is not to be underestimated in the new healing meta. So definitely keep an eye on this. We have the Perfected Asylum Resto Staff. When you cast Combat Prayer or whatever, the cost of your Magicka and Stamina Healing abilities are reduced by 30% for 3 seconds. Now this was certainly a pretty big idea for when uh, Vigor was pretty OP uh, back in week three, week 1 to week 3 PTS. But then they sort of nerfed Vigor back to the original state, or rather it's like I think 13-19% to 19 uh, better than it was in terms of healing done compared to pre-Scalebreaker, but a bit more costly of course due to the reduced duration. Um, again, pretty much the same case for the Asylum Restoration, restoration Staff and the uh, Master Restoration Staff. It's pretty outclassed by the Master Resto Staff, but still it's good to have one just in case, um, especially if you're having trouble sustaining for whatever reason, which you really shouldn't dispatch because of, again, you're not spamming orbs, you're not spamming healing springs. And here we have Olorime, um, definitely one of the most powerful healing sets in the game. Uh, very consistent set at giving major courage, much more so than its counterpart Spell Power Cure in pretty much every scenario. So on, um, definitely always have Olorime in hand because that is going to be your default uh, major courage provider for your entire raid team or your four man group. And we have Perfected Black Rose Resto Staff, and this is going to be a very interesting staff to be looking at for certain fights where you may need to use Healing Ward, since Healing Ward has also been changed to uh, tick every second of the shield's remaining strength before it expires. Uh, the major vitality given to the people with it is going to be hilariously strong. So this is definitely still a set you want to have in uh, hand, especially for potentially a Lacustis Hardman. And here we have Sanctuary. Now, a lot of people think Sanctuary helps, but more often than not, it's usually the DPS or people messing up mechanics or being stupid. I mean, Sanctuary, 12% more healing received is not going to save people from being stupid. Um, but again, very situational set in my opinion. I don't think it's very helpful, but potentially it might be this patch if you need to boost your healing done. Very small radius as well, 10 meters. Um, that barely covers the uh, burn positioning of uh, VHOF Hard Mode Execute. So keep, just try it out and see what happens. But again, it shouldn't be required 100% of the time. And the Worm Cult um, set, Worm's Raymond set, very great set for your Magic DPS composition especially in Veteran Cloud Rest and Veteran Solemn Sanctorium Hard Mode if you just want to bring Mac DPS. Um, but typically for Asylum Sanctorium Hard Mode you want the off tank to wear it, not either of the two healers. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we, we're getting down to the more interesting sets. So Trinimax Valor, this is sort of a niche set in my opinion. For but I mean it could for uh, DK healers, but we're, I'm not really going to go into DK healing in this video. I'm mostly going to be covering the top four classes for healing, in my opinion, which are Nightblade healers, Sorcerers healers, Templar healers, and Warden healers. But this is going to be uh, interesting to the look at for definitely PvP and potential parts of PVE. Twilight Remedy. Now Twilight Remedy, a lot of people are thinking, are you serious, Nephis? I mean. <laughs> It, isn't this a meme set or whatever? I, I think with how the orb change occurred, now that every single person is guaranteed to synergize it, uh, in, in my opinion, I think Twilight Remedy is going to be a pretty strong set, especially if you take into consideration the amount of healing done over 10 seconds. That's more than Radiant Regeneration. Now, Radiant Regeneration sits somewhere around 21,000, and this is sitting at 22, almost 23,000 health over 10 seconds, and they gain Minor Force. So, this could honestly 
definitely be a best in slot set depending on how your group wants to do things or how your dps want to gear themselves right so that this is going to be a very very interesting set to look at with the new uh, orb changes and the uh, additional access to many of the uh, synergies we now have so martial knowledge and zen's redress these two sets were the most looked at um, buff and debuff sets for raid teams on the PTS. In my opinion, if you had to choose one or the other, I would definitely choose Martial Knowledge. Um, Martial Knowledge, pretty easy to begin procking. You have to be below 50% stamina, and as a healer, not too hard to get there before a fight or during a fight. And then your light attacks, which is pretty, it's a very, very easy way to proc the set. A light attack causes the enemy to take. 8% additional damage for 5 seconds, and this effect occurs once every 8 seconds, as opposed to Zen's Redress, which basically has uh, enemies touched with Zen by a lie attack take 1% more damage for each damage over time effect you placed on them. But the damage over time effect you, uh, your DPS puts on them, it's not AoE stuff, it's single target um, dot. So, in a way, I think Martial Knowledge will win out if you had to choose one or the other as a healer. Or as a Mac DPS. So these are all the sets that you definitely need to keep in mind, guys, for Scalebreaker and onwards. And in the future there'll probably be a few more sets. I'm not sure. Or potentially I've missed um, some sets that will be pretty good. But I think this is this covers most of it for now. In terms of the best races for healing and PvE content for the Elder Scrolls Online as of Update 23, I think these two races, the High Elf and Breton, or Altmer and Breton, are going to be the best races for healing, period. I mean, you can heal on whatever race you want, but if you want to optimize the healing done, your healing numbers, and so forth, and with taking into consideration the new playstyle and the new gear setup you'll have to take with more spell damage enchants, no atro mundus, uh, no magic recovery enchants, and buy stat food, um, you're definitely gonna go with either the Breton or the Altmer. And number one spot I would give to Breton because of their cost reduction. They get the same amount of max magic as high elves, they get, they get more mitigation and they get cost reduction to their abilities, to their magic abilities. Which is pretty insane if you think about it. And Altmer, uh, they do get more spell damage, so that does squeeze out a little bit more healing. But with Breton, you are 100% guaranteed to sustain uh, full damage, like full spell damage spec as a healer. And that's that, and that's going to lead us into uh, the next part of the video, which is the new playstyle. And you'll see what I mean with uh, Breton and Altmer being the best two races. So before we show you guys a new playstyle, I'm going to be going over how you're going to set up your gear, traits, and enchantments. Okay, so I think gear-wise for next patch, uh, you can definitely consider all seven divines on your body. Now I know a lot of healers, including myself, do three infused on the large body pieces. Uh, sometimes with prismatic, sometimes with just magic, or sometimes with other stats, right? However, I think next patch, um, you can definitely consider going all seven divine traits, and I'll explain that here shortly. And on the jewelry, you'll definitely want all spell damage glyphs. And on your, you know, destruction staff, resto staff, definitely have a weapon damage sp slash spell damage enchantment. Um, you can also have absorb magicka or poison on your resto staff or your destro bar. Doesn't really matter. And your trait on your resto staff, especially is gonna be precise or powered, but more, leaning more towards precise. So looking at the character sheet here real quick, our Munda Stone is gonna be the Thief. And the Thief will allow us to um, have more chances of crit healing. The base healing done due to the nerfs, due to the nerfs of the healing uh, as of Scalebreaker isn't too impressive. And we want to crit heal now. It's pretty much going to be stacking spell damage as healers and crit healing, pumping out bigger numbers. That's that's literally it. Um, and you don't need the sustain, you don't need the atro mundus, you don't need magic recovery glyphs, and you can definitely get away with buy stat food. 
um, if you're feeling unsure about you know, if you're, it's your first time doing a new fight or something, you can do like Witch Mothers or a recovery food. But by stat food, you shouldn't have any problems with it, especially if you're Breton. And that's pretty much it. So the new play style is put a, put a, layer, put a, put a layer of healing down. That's 12 seconds. We have orbs going for 10 seconds as it passes through the group. And if you want to set down lightning wall for concussion and off balance, that's 12 seconds. That that's that's also a skill that's been changed. And again, you've noticed by now that they're really emphasizing these long durations. Right? So what do you do while everything here is ticking away going down? I still have five seconds, I'm still talking and jacking off on the mic, right? <laughs> so what do I what do I do, right? So Again, like if you look at my magic pull right now, I mean, it's like, okay, I'll do a few casts just to make sure radiant regeneration is going off, but that's it. As you can see, sustain is not going to be an issue this patch. Now, I want to mention something before we end this part of the video, the Master's Restoration Staff. Earlier, I said Healing Springs may still be a consideration. And that's because of the Master Restoration Staff, and I've showed you guys the tooltip, the insane tooltip on the Master Restoration Staff. 740 stamina back to you and 5 others that you heal, or 6 others that you heal, that's a lot of stam regen. That's stam, that's 740 stam per second per tick. So you're gonna be healing, you're gonna, you're gonna be pretty much spamming this, right, to give almost infinite stam back. What this will allow your groups to do, basically, is potentially let the stam DPS run by stat food. Right now, most people are running Lava Foot, which is a uh, Lava Foot or Dubious Cameron Drone. So it's pretty insane. Uh, the Master's Rest of Staff alone changing up the play style. It's kind of funny that in the patch where you're not really encouraged to uh, do layered healing or multiple springs at the same time, you are. <laughs> Uh, just with just with this staff alone, you really want to do this. And even then, like sustain is fine. Look at that. So again, I really want to emphasize this. We're, we're gonna step away from magic recovery glyphs and uh, the uh, the Atronac Mundustin. We can definitely sustain all this ridiculous boosted stats pretty easily as a scale breaker. In this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you guys a basic bar setup for Sorcerer and three other classes, Templar, Warden, and Nightblade. I will not be showing Dragon Knight and Necromancer, because those I don't believe come close to these four classes as of now, as of the, as of the making of the video. So for the Sword Killer, your basic bar setup, whether it is, you know, Trials or four main content, you have Energy Orb on the front bar, and you'll, you'll ask, well, why not Liquid Lightning for Alkash or whatever. I mean, Energy Orb, it doesn't disappear anymore now that they've made it so that multiple people can synergize off of one orb. It's guaranteed to get to a tank now. It is a bit slower, so perhaps there are some instances where you'll need to put Liquid Lightning down and, uh, along with Orb, but I don't think that's going to be the case from now. Um, Power Surge, this is going to be your AoE class heal. Uh, from what I've tested, it seems to reliably proc almost every 3 to 4 seconds. Uh, even if you don't seem to have a very high crit rating, like I'm talking about like 40 or 50, uh, you can definitely get a higher crit rating, like up to 60 or more, as a sword healer. So, this is gonna be a must. I mean, it's, it's basically free healing, and it lasts for 33 seconds. That's pretty easy to keep up for free, and every time you crit heal, you heal yourself and five other people around you for almost 3k health, which is not bad at all. And Blockade of Storms, I mean, again, so this is going to depend on whether you have Stam DPS in your group or not. For Concussion, for Off Balance, pretty damn useful. If you don't have any Stam DPS, you can take this off and that's going to be a flex slot. Um, Empowered Ward, you, you'll still want to use this as your shield. And again, this is also a flex spot whether you need a shield or not. But this is going to give minor intellect to both you and your nearby teammates, which increases magic recovery by 10%, very useful for magic DPS composition. And they also buff the shield strength by a slight 10%, I believe, along with Hardened Ward. So, I mean, whatever. 
and we have summon twilight matriarch and this is going to be your standard sword burst heal also it's going to give you more health as a result of uh, the daedric pa summoning passive i believe it's expert summoner yep increase your max health by eight percent while you have a pet active pretty damn useful and your ultimate on the Destro staff bar can pretty much be almost anything i mean the storm matter is great for both um, off DPS and providing uh, major berserk to people, pretty cool. And in you know worst case scenarios, you can do absorption field, pretty useful in boss one v Hoff and certain other instances where you know your group would be okay within the gate or two. And this can also be helpful for uh, cloud rest harmon execute if you're um, lacking in the healing output. Otherwise, though, um, you can put horn on the Destro staff bar here. And you can go with the reviving barrier on the uh, resto staff bar, and you also have magic aid, prefer preferably uh, both points of the magic aid, so you get 10% additional magic recovery. I mean, it's just free magic recovery because why not on your resto staff's uh, healing skill or bar? I mean, now illustrious healing is going to be your go-to for most cases. It does more healing. It lasts longer than healing springs. Um, and we have inner light. This is going to be a flex slot as well. You don't really need to have inner light here. I mean, in, in this case, we can have symbiosis. It's going to be. It's actually a pretty fun skill, <laughs> um, despite it being a little clunky. And we have combat prayer, rapid regeneration, and twilight matrix because we have to double bar the pet. So radiating regeneration is pretty strong. It's going to be really strong for four man and certain trial fights. Um, definitely have to experiment with it for certain trial positionings and fights. But otherwise, this is going to be your standard thing. You're going to pretty much be putting a heal down or blockade. Have your power search active. It's going to take every three seconds, ideally, with your thief uh, as your Munda Stone and buy stuff, food, spell damage, whatever. You have combat perk to provide uh, minor berserk, and it's a nice AoE burst heal. Uh, for both the tank and DPS if need be, and you you have Radiant Regeneration ticking too for at least um, four to five other people if you cast it twice in a very short time span. span. And if you, if you have absolutely nothing to do, right, you can just toggle on some Biosis and heavy attack the tank for to heal them, or just, you know, kind of mess around. That's how much time you have as a healer, regardless of class. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, you will probably, if you have a magic DPS composition, you'll probably want a dark magic skill to proc for uh, spell, the minor prophecy, the spell crit for 20 seconds, which is pretty huge. Uh, from, my, from my experience, putting crystal frag on the resto staff bar, it's a pretty reliable source of um, exploitation. Otherwise, you do have additional options such as Defensive Rune and Dark Conversion if you're having sustain issues somehow. And for the Warden class healer, this is another basic bar setup. So on the Destro Staff bar, we have Budding Scenes. Again, awesome change to Budding Scenes. Heal over time, grants a synergy, and it's also a burst heal at the end or a trigger. Pretty great. And Frost Cloak. So you can do either morph, Real, really will depend on whether or not you have uh, ready access to minor protection, whether someone else has a circle protection down for you, but generally either morph can work. Um, most people go with ice fortress for the personal ice, I mean, personal minor protection, but uh, some healers also go expensive for frost cloak. And for blockade of storms, again, typical off-balance concussion for your stam DPS composi composition, if it's a mag composition, doesn't really matter. As I said, flex slot again, uh, could be for purge or whatever. Energy orb, again, typical um, synergy that will be guaranteed for everyone. Blue Betty, now Blue Betty is a matter of debate since the healer playstyle overall doesn't really let you um, get drained of Magicka for the most part. So what, an interesting thing we can do here for a basic setup is put Bursting Vines on this bar, which is pretty helpful on certain fights like Lacus D's Hard Moon if, on, if you're healing a DPS in the Ice Cage. And we could put in, uh, Inner Light from the Mage's Guild on this bar and gain more max magic and such 
And then we have combat prayer, lesser sealing, typical, and we have enchanted growth, which is the warden's version of a burst heal, while which provides minor intellect and minor endurance. Um, it's a bit iffy at close range, but it does hit pretty large uh, chrono AoE in front of you. The DPS and tank are in front of you. Polar win. It's gonna. It seems like they really want the skill to be more geared towards warden tanks. Not gonna be a great. Uh, Warden Healer ability, in my opinion. So we're gonna go with Radiant Regeneration, and again, this is gonna play a huge part in four main content. Uh, you can do Healing Ward for certain instances, but for the most part, it's gonna be it's gonna look like this. Ultimate wise, it's gonna be Aggressive Horn on the Desro Staff bar, and we need Northern Storm on the Resto Staff uh, Ultimate bar because Northern Storm is gonna be a passive eight percent max magic increase. And also, you will probably need to use major protection at times as a healer to, you know, mitigate the damage for your group. And it's especially very useful in Veteran Sanctum Amphidia. So, that's pretty much it for the Warden. Out of the four classes we're going to be looking at in this video today, the Nightblade class healer is probably going to be the most fun and most adventurous. Because there's a lot of room, and at the same time there's not a lot of room to make in terms of the, the bar setups. So let's go over it together. So on the front bar, on the Destro staff bar, I mean, we're gonna have healthy offering. The healthy offering is gonna be something very passive you're gonna be proccing just for the minor mending. Um, if you feel like you're not used to using healthy offering at you know the best times in PvE content, whether it's four main or trials, uh, you can take it off. The minor mending shouldn't make it break it, but the minor mending access for the Nightblade healers is pretty good. Uh, even if it's for just a short duration, so this is this could be pop for very healing intensive purposes, and otherwise you could replace it with ele elemental drain or purge or what have you. Same thing for a uh, flex slot. And we have funnel health. This is going to be a very basic uh, heal for four man or even some parts of a trial, uh, whether it's trash or something. Very passively uh, done. You just. Activate it once on the target and it's just gonna keep taking for 10 seconds. We have blocking the storms, same thing as I've been saying for the other classes. Uh, for concussion off balance for your stamina DPS, if not, if you don't have any stamina DPS, we're gonna take, take it off. We have energy orb, we have siphoning attacks, siphoning attacks. Honestly, again, a matter of debate if you actually do need an extra source of, sustain, of sustain as a healer, but if you feel like your sustain is lacking, then yes, siphoning attacks is going to be a great way to get your sustain back as a Nightblade healer. Now, the Desert Staff bar ultimate is pretty cool because you pretty much have the option of running all three ultimates, unlike the other classes where you know one ultimate might be good and one ultimate might be bad. Um, we're gonna have Soul Harvest for trash, for Nightblade Healer. I mean, the Soul Harvest passively while slotted. Anytime you kill an enemy, you gain ten, 10 ultimate. Um, the Nightblade Healers offer a bit more damage than their Templar Warden and sort of counterparts do. So when you're doing, you know, part of uh, Sap Essence or something on the front or on the Duster Bar or something, you do have a chance of getting your ultimate back every time you kill something. That's an option for trash, for four man, and otherwise we have Soul Siphon. It's an incredible amount of healing done over four seconds. Uh, you also get, you know, major vitality in the span of four seconds, and you also uh, give a synergy to an ally in the group. Otherwise, we do have Bolstering Darkness, and this is going to be more for trials, in my opinion. I think this will be one of the many answers to uh, many uh, groups having problems with mitigating a lot of things in, you know, in the context of the healing nerfs. So if, if you don't necessarily want your damage dealers to help out with you know, healing with your healers, or if you uh, need a bit more, then Bolstering Darkness is probably going to be one of your many options, whether it's from a Nightblade healer or from a Nightblade tank. And the best thing about Bolstering Darkness is you can set it up in the way that everyone knows to go inside of it and get, get out of it, because the, uh, the major protection will still be on people even after they leave the AoE. And then for the rest of the staff bar we have Illustrious Healing, Refreshing Path, and uh, it's a pretty decent AoE heal. Combat Prayer, we have Radiant Regeneration for 4 man, we have Sap Essence for Trash. Sap Essence is a huge amount of healing done for trash fights. And you can swap this in and out for uh, things like Purge or Inner Light, what have you. 
Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, aggressive horn on the rest of the stat bar. Again, um, aggressive horns are always nice. And I do recommend always having a safe ultimate on the other bar, whether you're Knight Blade Templar or Warden. Last but not least, the Templar class healer, basic bar setups will probably look something like this. We got Aggressive Horn on the Destro Staff ultimate slot, um, and we have Reviving Barrier on the back. Obviously this can be swapped out for uh, uh, Solar Prison, or whichever, uh, Solar Disturbance, if for whatever reason the boss is moving around too much. But ideally, most of the time it's Solar Prison, and you can use you can use this in place of barrier as a as a safety mitigation alt for certain fights. Otherwise, let's look at the desert staff skill bar. We have luminous shard. So, luminous shard again. This is sort of in the same spot now uh, with the sort conduits. So your orb basically is going to be guaranteed to get to the tank, but obviously will depend on how slow it's getting there and what. What, this is, what's the, what the situation is and so on. So you may still need Luminous Shard and so on. We have Channel Focus, it's a nice uh, armor buff made for, made for both Major Resolve Major Ward and also gives us a sustain, which again, debatable if we really, truly, truly need it. And we have Power to Light, which is the minor fracture, minor breach skill that a lot of groups want healers to run in trials. Uh, you don't necessarily need to run it for dungeons, but it's nice if you do. We have Cleansing Ritual, so as I said early on in the video, we're going to be looking at the Extended Ritual Morph. This is going to last for 18 to 24 seconds, depending on uh, whether you're fully leveled or not, or, or not. And at full level, it's 24 seconds. And if you compare this to the other class classes we've seen so far, it's probably one of the longest uh, the over time durations besides power search which, which was 33 some seconds long so we have wall that's 12 seconds we have ritual that's 23 seconds and in the meantime um, we have illustrious healing and so on and we have combat prayer radiant, radiant regeneration if need be in my opinion the templar class is probably the best class suited for spamming illustrious heals if you have the master's resto staff because of the significant longer duration on extended ritual um, which is which is a lot uh, you can also argue that sword healers also do have a similar uh, play style for the master resto staff so yeah that, that's pretty much it guys um, obviously there's a few spots where you can swap things out for like guard or the new altar which is instant cast now. So there's, there's, it's all gonna depend on what your group needs you to do, what your raid team wants you to do, and what the fights are. That's pretty much it. And for the last part of the video, we're gonna be go looking at a uh, general champion point setup for healers. So even before scale breaker and after scale breaker, you don't really need to put the full 100 points into Blessed. At a certain point between 13 to 15 percent blessed it's like almost no difference in your base healing output uh we do have at least 75 into elfborn or you could do 73 or even higher like 81. so really it's honestly as i said all about the crit heals and uh boosting your spell damage and your max magic as a healer dispatch pretty much because again you don't need to sustain the previous play style of putting out multiple orbs and multiple uh, layered healing springs and for the rest of the blue cp it, it's really up to you like it doesn't really matter um if you want to go for more dp like a mostly healer but semi dps spec i strongly recommend domiturge uh at 16 to staff expert and the rest into elemental expert like this uh, probably 43 in the elemental expert and yeah that's that's pretty much it guys that is your general blue cp as a pve healer regardless of class obviously it will be a bit different depending on your uh four man build or trials build but it's gonna pretty much resemble this for the most part and so that's it guys that's my uh ultimate healer's guide for scale breaker and onwards if anything significant happens again to healers and the entire playstyle again, I'll probably make a video like this again. In the meantime, if you think I missed anything or you guys have any more questions regarding uh, healing in general in the Elder Scrolls Online, 
let me know down in the comments below and I'll make sure to get to you. Um, I'll also probably be focusing primarily on healing this patch as I primarily focused on necro tanking the previous patch. However, expect a lot more content besides healing from me in the near future. We got a lot of videos um, lined up as a result of a lot of changes from Scalebreaker. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay safe, have fun, and see you next time.